this week's MTD podcast. I'm Giovanni Albanese hosting today's show, a passionate engineer and a proud member of the MTD team. Today's podcast, keeping the machine tool industry moving. I have the pleasure today to be at Fleg Projects headquarters and I'm joined by Mark Marshall, who's the sales director and a member of the board. This is a really interesting podcast and thank you very much for having the MTD team on site today, Mark. No problem at all. You're very much welcome um, and we're looking forward to doing some quite positive work with you guys. Well, it's brilliant. I think that what all of our customers have in common is they all have a factory and from time to time they'll buy a new machine or sell an old machine or even move from one factory to another. And this is where you really can help. But before we get into um, the importance of FLEG projects and what you can actually do for businesses um, in our industry, can you firstly tell our audience a little bit about yourself, your background and, and, and how you started at FLEG and also the history of FLEG, please? Yeah, no problem. So um, I left school um, pretty much as soon as I could leave school. Um, all I wanted to do was work in an office. So I didn't have any sort of grand plans of, you know, what I wanted to do or where I wanted to be. Um, but I got very fortunate. So I, my first job was working for a business in High Wycombe called Cavewood. Um, it was fantastic because they very much liked investing in young people. Um, it was a family business, it was a bigger family business than, than Flegs, but we had lots of drivers and lots of characters and. Um, it was just a great place to be and, and to learn. Um, Cavewood had a, so Cavewood used to do, move all sorts of stuff around. So uh, high value, dangerous good, and all sorts of stuff. But they also had a machinery division as well. Um, so they would organize collections from the OEMs factories across Europe. Um, but then we had vehicles and guys in the UK then that would meet those lorries, offload them and do the stuff that Flegs do now. Um, Flegs then bought that division. Um, so at the time, I didn't move straight away. My boss at the time came to Flegs. Um, a couple of the drivers came to Flegs and some of the lorries. In fact, a couple of the guys are still here actually from back then as well. Um, so yeah, so I carried on at Cavewood for another sort of five or six years. Um, and then I moved across to Flegs. Um, I started basically as a transport manager. So I would be organising where the guys were going on a day to day and sort of making sure they knew what they were doing. Um, and then I've just sort of worked my way through the business really. So I've, I've been fortunate to work with Jason Flegg. I've learned loads off Jason um, about obviously being involved in running the business. So yeah, that's kind of sort of how I've ended up at Flegg's. How long have you been working at Flegg, Mark? Um, I think it's 23 years. 23 now. years, so, yeah. wow. I've only had two jobs. So I was at Cavewood um, for 10 or 15 years, I suppose. And then, yeah. Well, well, you don't look that old. You don't <laughs> look that old. Now, FLEG projects, I mean, um, before we start focusing on the machine tool industry and, and how you can help that particular industry, yeah. um, can you tell us about how the business originated and a little bit more? You mentioned Jason Flegg and a little bit about him and, 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 and a little bit more detail about the business and what you actually do. It's a lot more than actually meets the eye. Yeah, so we started off really as a transport business. So the business was started by um, Jason's stepdad um, and it was literally just a man and a, and a lorry basically. Um, but they saw, I think they saw a bit of a niche in the market. So they started delivering, you know, we're talking about secondhand lorries and you know, not particularly nice, you know, high end equipment. But they started. They saw a bit of a niche in moving sort of um, machinery parts, um, and, and like I say, a bit of a niche. Really, it wasn't sort of your, your typical sort of general haulage. Um, and they basically grew the business where people could see the value. So the service they got, um, they quite enjoyed. And then we started moving into moving some of the more complex and newer machines. Um, then they bought more lorries and obviously had more um, employees. So, in fact, John Petch um, was Flegg's first ever employee. He's still here. Fantastic. Um, obviously, he's a bit more longer in the tooth now, but he's very much an ambassador for this company. Um, Jason Flegg is obviously um, still here. Jay was a driver to begin with, um, and then has obviously moved into the MD role as sort of other people have moved on. Um, and, yeah, so we... You know, we, we've made ourselves a bit of a 
a niche, I suppose, for for moving machines and and sort of sometimes stuff other people don't want, really want to move. I mean the, the 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 business. I mean, we met you at the Fanuc Open House, and uh, yeah. and now you are a proud uh, sponsors of the MTD channel, which is excellent, and we'll be go- be doing a lot more work together in the months and the years to come. Um, but in, in regards, you mentioned lorries, you mentioned uh, the engineering side of the business too. Um, Jason's quite a keen engineer himself, and he works on on kind of new innovative solutions for. His trucks. How many trucks do you have? And tell us about some of these innovative solutions that you um, supply. Yeah, so we, Jason's always looking at finding different ways to do things better. Um, so whether that be you know some safer, um, and more efficient, I guess. So, and there are always products out there. So um, you know we've always we've always run higher vehicles. Um, we have, I think it's five higher vehicles now on the fleet. Everything from like a sort of two ton capacity lift right up to a 30 ton capacity lift on a, on a high ab. Um, we then run um, Arctic vehicles, rigid vehicles. So we've got a mixture of different vehicles, but everything really is designed to carry um, machines. So Jay will spend a lot of time looking at um, what the customer needs. Um, and obviously trying to fit a vehicle, design a vehicle which will kind of cover lots of different sort of um, roles, but it can be used on different types of work as well. So we don't just have a lorry that's good for one type of machine. We try and design something that's good for you know a range of different machines. Application well. specific. Yeah, there's a, there's a good word. But then we obviously, as the business has grown as well, then we've managed to invest in other sort of types of lifting equipment. So we have um, hoist forklifts. So these are big, heavy, they're quite, they're very uh, compact forklifts, but these are forklifts that can lift sort of 20 odd tons. Um, We have hydraulic gantry systems. The biggest one we've got lifts 125 tons. Wow. Um, We've got more kit on the way as well. So we've got a new piece of kit, which has come in. I think it's due to be collected from America. So we'll be, Launching, we'll be giving some information as, on that as well. So keep an eye on the website. We'll be launching some information on that as well. Um, so yeah, Jay's always keen to try and invest in in the best kit we can, and obviously that goes for the lorries as well, as you saw in the Swarf and Chips. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I mean, yeah, definitely watch the Swarf and Chips show if you haven't already. It's on the MTD CNC website, and you can find it on YouTube. Now you mentioned your largest lifting equipment or capacity is 125 tonnes. What, mm-hmm. What's the actual heaviest lift you have actually performed? Um, I think the heaviest single piece we lifted was a, apart from a mach- uh, an injection moulding machine, um, which would have been about two years ago, uh, was about 95 tonnes, I wow. think it was. So on that particular job, it was involving taking, lifting the machine off of uh, transport that had come from China. Um, and then obviously, unpacking it and getting it ready to go into the factory um so yeah that would be I mean, it wasn't massively big it was you know probably the size of a car sort of thing but obviously very dense so uh it wasn't particularly difficult to lift it was just obviously it, it, it's very very heavy so um right. we had to make sure we had the right wow. equipment on it now you're working with some some large companies some well-known names within our industry aston martin for an example you, you're actually doing a complete factory move for them mm-hmm. um siemens um, and, and some other big names within our within our industry OEM so th- there may be a misconception that you just me- move one machine from one destination to another but that is not the case can you tell us a little bit more I know it, it's a it's a high profile company and you might be limited on what you can and can't tell us but can you tell us a little bit more for example about the Aston Martin project and what that actually entails from the planning of when the inquiry comes into the delivery yeah, so we've worked with Aston Martin. I mean, obviously they've been called different things over the years. They were Force India and some other different names. But we've built a good relationship with the guys that work in the factory up at uh, Silverstone. I think they've also got a place in Brackley. So we've been in and out of that factory for over the last sort of ten or fifteen years. But normally that would involve putting a new machine in um, or um, moving some machines around for them within the factory. Or sometimes they want to move machines between factories so we've got a good working relationship with them um and they've decided to obviously now um build a new facility up at silverstone they needed to get moved across from one site to the other um 
so naturally they came to us um, and we were happy to to work with them um, so yeah it's been an interesting project it's uh obviously they're doing very well at the moment as well um within the f1 championship so that, i think that's the, very much their priority so obviously they need to keep the uh the f1 team with all the you know they, they don't need the, the distraction of the move they want to be able to concentrate on what's important to them which is obviously keeping that car at the front of the grid well the most in my opinion the most precious commodity is, is that we've all got is time mm-hmm. especially in the formula one in industry yeah. that's it it's, that's 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 even more yeah, important and, 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 and critical know, yeah. but in, in in the in the machine tool industry as well if you've gone gone to it and, and placed a big investment in a new machine tool You've placed that investment because you you need to produce more work. You need to make more parts, and you'll have customers waiting for them parts. and And, and time is effectively money, but also the machine tool has got a significant value. From you know, machine tools can range from fifty thousand pounds up to a million pounds. Now these are these are <laughs> precious uh, pieces of kit that you know need to be handled with care. Can you tell us a little bit more about the the importance of moving a, a machine tool and, and 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 a little bit more about the specialist knowledge that you guys have yeah i mean um we're very fortunate to have um you know some of the guys we've got working a lot of the guys uh, even on the board have hands-on experience um and knowledge and you know we've also got some guys that have been here 20 plus years so no machines really the same i suppose i would say and obviously in the uk no factory is really the same we work in yeah places like aston martin you know f1 mm. factories but we also work in very small sort of machine shops as well so they are very different um and obviously there's a bit of a different etiquette as well around um working in different types of environment um but the principles are, are the same really you, you want to be able to get this machine moved firstly it's got to be done safely um and we also want to understand from the sort of customer's point of view what are you trying to achieve here is it i think understanding the how you sort of fit into the bigger picture sometimes helps um and obviously if you share that information with the guys that are actually doing the work for us they understand obviously how critical it is to get the machine not just done safely on time no damage because obviously damage means a it's a, obviously a cost um but b you could also potentially then not have that machine running as well so and that's everybody's kind of worst nightmare really is that we end up with a machine that's not able to function for the customer so that's very rare that's happened in the time that i've been at flags um but that's obviously our, our ultimate aim is to be as less of a headache i suppose we want to get in get the job done and people to not really notice we're even there sometimes what what really what's really stood out for me um even before today when i first met yourself and jason and you were telling me about your business one i learned a lot and i learned a lot of things that i didn't know mm-hmm. uh, but secondly um your attention to detail and the the customer service aspect and how important this side of the business is to you really stood out to me a lot i'm assuming that off the back of that customer service and and that exceptional um, service that you provide, that you get a lot of referrals, you get a lot of repeat business. Is is, is that the case? Yeah, I mean the, the business is obviously is is kind of split into three kind of you know we're, we're one company, but we have three sort of divisions if you like. So transport division is basically um, customers that we work for on a day to day. So there will be repeat customers that have so typically OEMs. So they'll we might do three or four machines a week for them sort of people really um projects is more um large factory moves or big machine installations so when we, we do a lot of work in um cardboard packaging factories so some of these machines can take several weeks to install um, and often we've got to take a machine out before the new one goes in so we can have guys on site for you know two or three weeks helping to dismantle or, or, or install a machine and then we obviously have the um, the medical division as well, which is our newest division. Um, and this involves obviously working in hospitals and medical settings, um, installing X-ray systems, MRI, CT scanners. Tell me a little bit more about the medical uh, work that you do. I mean, it's quite interesting and it blew me away a little bit. Tell me what you can anyway that, that, yeah, that, that we can um, say on this podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very different, I suppose, to what we've been used to in terms of the environments that we work in um, and the etiquette that goes around it, I guess. So 
again, we're very lucky that we have three or four guys here that um, have worked in that industry for a long time. So there's nothing really they haven't seen or done. Um, and they know a lot of the, because a lot obviously a lot of the hospitals aren't really designed for large pieces of kit to go in and out. So there's always a challenge of one degree or another. And because of these guys obviously used to being in different hospitals, they know pretty much, you know, if you said there's a machine going in or an MRI going into Cambridge Hospital, they'll remember last time. And so, you know, you can't beat that sort of experience, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's it's very different because it's it's planned to the nth degree. Um, a lot of the work's over weekends as well. So obviously that creates some challenges with staffing as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's, um, it's, a, it's different to the, the typical work that we do in the transport and projects just because it's a, there's a lot more planning that goes into it. You mentioned um, experience. I mean, that that's key um, and, and, and the specialised knowledge. And we also mentioned before the, the podcast started about the, the, the skills gap and, and, and trying to get skilled employees we 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 incur the same problems within our industry and i think it's it's, it's becoming something that's uh, a problem generally you know tell us how you overcome um issues such as this yeah so yeah i mean one of the things obviously we've struggled with over the last few years has been driver shortages as well so we went through a bit of a period because obviously for a lot of our drivers aren't just drivers, you know, they get involved in the installation, they get involved in helping the crew, obviously getting the machine in and out. So mm. it's not just a driving job. So, and driving jobs are quite different, I suppose, because people, um, I suppose it's a bit of a trade off. Some people just want to earn the money. Some people want to do something that's a bit more interesting, I guess. So, um, attracting drivers has been quite difficult. Um, and obviously we've had to, um, pay more salary to retain drivers and attract new ones but in regard to sort of generally sort of getting more people to do this kind of work Jason's always liked to take you know he, he came out of school with well, like myself I suppose with nothing we didn't come out with loads of GCSEs and opportunities and stuff but um, you work hard um, stick at something so we would like to take the kids that come out of school that haven't got you know academically aren't massively blessed but they will work hard and if you um invest the time into them you'll get the commitment back from them so we like to take and people that tend to join they tend to enjoy the work because it's very different so you know you're not really in the same place too often you're doing different things every day so that's why it becomes more um appealing i suppose um, you've, c- you've certainly um, got a great f- philosophy here mm-hmm. at Blake. It stands out um, from talking to you before and um, it, you know from previous meetings that we've had. It really does stand out. Um, I think that also you, you're very proactive as a business. I mean, for example, you know we're working together. You're working together with MTD. Um, tell us about your marketing strategy and, and, and about really the education that you want to kind of tell our audience about what actually goes into the work and the projects that you're involved with. Yeah, no problem. So I suppose we've been very fortunate over the years that we've, um, we've never really had to invest a lot in sales and marketing and um, we've been very lucky to have quite a loyal um, group of customers that will use us time and time again um, because obviously they, they've learned to trust us, I guess. Um, and in, indirectly, some of those, obviously people that are selling machines indirectly are kind of sort of our sales team, I suppose. So if they sell a new machine, obviously then the chances are we're going to get an order for delivering that. So they're kind of indirectly our sales team as well. Um, but obviously when we're on the project sort of side of things, um, that's a lot more, people don't move factories every day. So we spend a lot, I suppose we put more energy into our SEO and stuff on the website to try and attract projects, um, leads, I suppose. But yes, yeah, sort of marketing wise, we are, we've only everybody sort of scratched the surface, I guess, which is why it's an interesting opportunity to do some work with you guys because, um, it puts us in front of some people that maybe don't sort of understand who we are or how we do things. And um, yeah, that's what we're looking to do is, is to sort of make or bring it to attention to people. So sometimes how we can differentiate from people they're using at the moment, maybe, or. 
Well, we'll be seeing a lot more of you guys over the, like I mentioned earlier, over the coming months and, and years to come. And we'll be going to follow you on actual installations, real life installations from start to finish, which I'm actually really looking forward to, to actually be able to see what it actually uh, entails. You are going to be doing a show in September um, at the NEC. Um, how's that going? How's the planning for that show going? Yeah, so Jay decided that he wanted to do Interplast this year. So um, obviously we've got some experience of trade shows because um obviously we often get asked to get the machines to the shows for the customers um and in the past obviously if they used to sell the machines off the stands sometimes we'd actually pick the machines up off the stand and take them straight to the uh, customer doesn't seem to happen that way so much these days so i think obviously that, that the world has changed but uh, yeah so jay's decided he wants to do interplast this year um again again more sort of brand awareness i suppose and you know, we've got some customers already in that sector. Um, so it's an opportunity for us to showcase again um, and educate people on you know, who we are, how we approach things. Um, might be a little bit different to makes people a bit more aware of some of the things they maybe need to be careful of when they're um, deciding to move some machines around. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, but it's our first show as well, so it's a very, very st steep learning curve. Well, I good it? luck with that one. Yeah, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final question from me, really. What value would you put on peace of mind? I mean, ultimately, when you're investing in a brand new machine tool and you need it to be delivered from one place to another safely and on time, or you're moving a complete factory from one location to another, how important is peace of mind? Um, well, obviously it's moving stressful. You know, we've all done the moving house sort of thing, but I can imagine if you're responsible for moving a factory or even if you're just moving a tool shop around, um, you know, you want to be able to, you obviously got this idea in your head of how you want it to look and how you want it to be. Obviously the reality of that can be quite daunting, I suppose, if you don't really know exactly what you're doing. Uh, we've done it time and time and time again for you know, hundreds of customers over the years. Um, and our, obviously our priority is to make sure, you know, if we we want the, the, job, the job to go well, um, because obviously that means that you get your, your tool shop running back how you expect it to be. It looks how you expect it to be. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's important. But I think it's also important to understand what the customer actually wants to achieve as well so it's it's not just about what happens on the day as well the planning that goes into it how you communicate with the customer you know you try and do as much for them as you can and obviously you know we're also very good at trying to point out things as well so you know we often go to a site survey for example and we'll say well, obviously you're gonna have to make sure we so we'll give them a list of pre-works that need to be done before we get there i think that gives you the peace of mind that you know the it's a joint effort really we want to work with you to get the best result um and everything to sort of be done on time and obviously on and, and budget as well so now mark it's been brilliant to be talking to you and to have a, a a greater insight into what it entails to move machine tools and to move a complete factory from one location to another there's definitely more than meets the eye as mentioned previously make sure to watch the swarf and chip show that we've previously produced and that will show you the capabilities that they have here on site at Fleg Projects and we'll be be looking to do uh, a real life case study um, in the coming months so if you're looking for a partner that you can trust when moving a machine tool or a factory look no further than Fleg Projects in Holmesbury. Aylesbury <laughs> thank you so much for your time Mark but until next time the NTD podcast Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.